The movie begins in a bank, as four masked individuals beat the bank manager, torturing him until he gives up the safe's code. The bank manager protests that the security systems are new and very difficult to open, so it doesn't have any password. Two robbers bring him to the safe while the other two bank employees and bystanders are hostages. They try to force the bank manager to open it by holding a gun to his neck and he reveals that if they kill him, they can never open it because he's the key. The key to the safe is the bank manager's body, and after an initial failure, the robbers shove two teeth that they had knocked out before back in place, which works to open the safe. So, the robbers remove the contents of only one safety deposit box containing diamonds and one other small, unidentified item. One of the robbers beats up the security guard because of moving. He goes to kill him, but the group's leader stops them, reminding him of his rules. The stubborn robber doesn't want to follow the leader's rules and demands to fight the leader. The leader ignores this and orders them to move out, but the stubborn robber pulls out his gun and shoots at their leader. The bullet only grazes the leader's jaw. Their leader also pulls out a gun and shoots the stubborn robber in the neck, which does minor damage. The stubborn robber gets angered, so he grabs the leader and they struggle. He pulls off the leader's mask, revealing a young, red-haired woman. All the hostages see her face and one of the other robbers says she must kill them because her identity is now compromised, but she doesn't. At this time, the stubborn robber struggles back up. He again gets shot, but this time with a fatal result. All the robbers leave the bank and ride away in a van. One of the robbers removes his mask, revealing a bearded man who's very angry with the woman. It's because his friend Wayne, the stubborn robber, is dead and because she didn't kill all the witnesses. Kevin Fuller, the robber sitting next to her, comes to her defense, and the woman knocks the bearded man unconscious with a backward punch. Later, the thieves split up, and the woman reminds the bearded man to lay low for a month, and then he'll receive 30000 As the bearded man leaves, Kevin and the woman, Alex, say he couldn't have done the job without her. She reminds him that she was already out before he pulled her back in and it was her face the witnesses saw, and she was the one who shot the stubborn robber. She gets some of the diamonds from Kevin, stating she's taken it as his down payment for the job. Kevin tells her he set them up in their old place, referencing their previous relationship. They leave just before she detonates a bomb she threw in the van with Wayne's corpse inside. That night, Alex and Kevin relax in different rooms at a luxury hotel. The news reports about the bank robbery. Witnesses have seen the woman's face, and a sketch of her gets flashed on the screen. Alex changes her eye and hair color to avoid people recognizing her from the news. Then, she receives a message from her accomplice who requests that she meet him. She goes to her partner's room, and it becomes apparent that they're ex-lovers. Alex is mad at him but wants to reconcile. The man says he found some even better insurance with the diamonds and wants Alex to help him with it but is disturbed by a knock on the door. Kevin tells her to hide, not to spook his female visitor. So, Kevin opens the door, revealing a woman named Jessica as his insurance, but some gunmen barge in behind her. The shooters capture Kevin and Jessica while Alex hides under the bed. Jessica gives up her cell phone with a sex video she plans to use as blackmail. He takes her phone, erases the video, and promptly shoots Jessica in the head. Then, the leader, Mr. Washington, orders his associates to torture Kevin and demands he gives back what they stole. Alex replies that the senator, their employer, already has enough money. Still, Washington needs the USB drive with the diamonds. The goons throw him over the bed and break his arm. Kevin laughs, saying the bed is uncomfortable, so it's probably made in China. Unbeknownst to the intruders, Alex is quiet and unnoticed under the bed the whole time. She hears his comment and sees the USB drive taped by a a made-in-China sticker under the bed frame and keeps it safe. After the continuous torture, Kevin dies, annoying Washington as he can't get the information he needs. He tells his goons to clean up the mess and to find Kevin's partners to find out where the diamonds are. He calls a U.S. senator to report it. Alex sneaks out from under the bed and finds a gun, pointing it at Washington, but it doesn't have any bullets, so she runs out and into her hotel room. Washington's goons chase after her, Alex shoots one of them in the foot and hides. When Washington and his goons enter her room, she's already outside. She grabs the injured man, using him as her human shield against the others. She distracts them and goes into the elevator to escape. 
Meanwhile, Alex goes to the laundry room and grabs some clothes to change in. She runs to the parking lot, grabs an unattended car, and drives out of the building. Washington and his goons chase her on the city streets, and the police chase after her when Alex runs a red light. However, her car crashes, but she still manages to escape them all. Later, Alex shows up at the bearded man's apartment and offers him money to let her in, as Washington and his goons are nearby. She tells him Kevin is dead and explains her situation. He confidently prepares to defend his place but underestimates his opponents and is quickly killed. In the other room, Alex calls Kevin's wife, Penny, and warns her to get out of town immediately. She also asks her to bring the package containing the diamonds and disc, which she suspects Kevin has stashed at home in his bug out bag. Penny insults Alex because she knows of Kevin and Alex's affair and refuses to bring her any package. However, she reluctantly prepares to leave. Alex then hides in a ceiling space and overhears Washington's plan to kill Kevin's wife and child. He redials the telephone and it calls the Fullers. Kevin and Penny's son, Matthew, answer the phone. Washington learns of their address by tricking the young boy over the phone. At the Fuller's home, Penny retrieves Kevin's bug-out bag from the garage ceiling, inadvertently breaking the windshield of her car in the process. She thoughtfully looks at the windshield fragments. Penny opens the package for Alex, sees a plane ticket and a fake passport for Alex, and throws it all in the trash. She tells her son. Matthew tells her that they're going on a trip that day. Later, he tells her someone is outside and it's Washington and his goons. They knock her out and take the bag while Matthew runs to hide. Washington leaves for the hotel with the bug out bag. Soon, Alex arrives on a stolen motorbike just in time to save Matthew from a goon. She struggles to fight the goon but manages to kill him. Another goon subdues Penny but Alex distracts him, giving Penny a chance to grab a heavy toy and hit him repeatedly. When Alex tries to look at the USB drive on the Fuller's home computer, it turns on a GPS device to tell someone where they are. She tells Penny to leave, but Penny insists on offering to help. Meanwhile, Washington receives a phone call from the senator asking about the drive. He's annoyed when he says he's sending his right-hand man, Doe MacArthur, to assist. Washington is annoyed but tells him assistance is needed as they have already handled the situation. As the cleanup at the hotel is taking place, Washington receives a call from Alex. She tricks him into revealing that they're at the hotel. She races to the hotel on the stolen motorbike and then follows him to an abandoned industrial building. Inside, Washington and his two associates, Mrs. Clinton and Mr. Jefferson, get off the car but orders Jefferson to stay with the vehicle. Alex sneaks in but gets a call from Penny about the diamonds. Jefferson spots Alex. She eventually subdues Jefferson and points a gun in his mouth before knocking him out. She opens the car's trunk and sees the cut-up corpses of Kevin and Jessica in bags. Alex grabs the bug-out bag and puts Jessica's head inside. Afterward, Alex calls Washington and states that the senator hired the robbers and Washington's crew. The robbers didn't know about the drive, only the diamonds, but Washington knew about both. Their same employer ordered his crew to kill the robbers. She then deliberately makes Washington and Clinton aware of her location by intentionally shooting the head of Jessica. Later, she attempts to trade Jefferson for the diamonds. Still, unbeknownst to them, she already has the diamonds and the drive. When Washington refuses, she shoots Jefferson in the head. She also activates a bomb hidden in Washington's SUV, but fails to harm him or Clinton seriously. Alex hides again but deliberately compromises her position, letting the two come to her. She grabs Washington by the necktie, threatening to drop him from the stairs if Clinton comes closer. Alex gets knocked out when a third member of Washington's crew appears. Soon, Alex is bound to a chair, and Clinton wakes her up with an intense shock of electricity. Washington demands the USB drive and reveals to her that the diamonds he thought he had were just shards of a broken windshield. She doesn't talk, prompting him to order his associates to put her leg in a vise. Her leg is tightened and about to snap in two, but he stops it. Washington figures out she was the infamous CIA entry specialist who quit after a job in Beirut years ago went wrong and innocent people died. The story gives him the idea to threaten the lives of Penny and Matthew for her to cooperate. Finally, Alex agrees to make a trade for the diamonds and drive at 9 p.m. that night at Cape Town Airport. She calls Penny to confirm the meeting. Washington stabs her leg deeply to stop her from running away. 
Before he leaves, he orders Clinton to get Alex dressed and to look presentable. That evening at the airport, Washington and Clinton show up along with a limping Alex in a short black dress, heels, and a cane. Unbeknownst to them, Penny is in a dark wig, kept incognito. As Alex walks by, Penny hands her a locker key at the airport. Washington is very suspicious of Alex and insists she open the locker and then the box. At the same time, Penny lingers around the airport with the bug out bag dripping a bit of blood. Alex opens the box and nothing happens, so Washington orders Clinton to recheck it. Alex has tricked him by saying both items are in an inner compartment in the box, and when Clinton opens this, a bomb goes off. Clinton is seriously wounded in the face but still able to fight. The airport police try to detain her but fail to do so. Meanwhile, the third crew member, Frank, has spotted and captured Penny. The airport police are now involved. Clinton defeats a squad of them in hand-to-hand -hand combat but finally gets shot. Washington and Alex fight, and she wrestles away from him the drive, which Penny had hidden in his necktie earlier. She stuns Washington with a blow to the face and runs toward the terminal door. Washington kills a policeman who gets in his way. At the same time, Frank grabs Penny through the chaos of the terminal but gets away as soon as Alex kills him by putting a bullet through his head. So, Penny runs towards the exit. The arriving police surround Washington just outside the terminal. He stops and raises his hands in defeat. Penny pulls off her wig, changing her appearance quickly, and tries to exit the airport. Alex comes out and talks to Washington. She says a chess comment, Queen to Bishop 5, and comments on his tie, making him grab it. She then yells out gun and runs off. The police open fire, and Washington dies in a hail of bullets. Later, Penny is a witness on the scene, along with many others, but gets released when the lead detective's attention gets diverted elsewhere. He's shown a bag left at the airport, the bug-out pack from earlier, which contains a red-headed woman's head. It's Jessica. Jessica's chopped head has been given a fresh wound to the jaw, just like Alex's. This makes the detectives believe it's the robber from the heist. Also, the detectives find a few diamonds on the scene, the same ones from the bank robbery. However, it gets revealed that Penny has the bulk of the diamonds in her bag. She leaves for her mother's place to pick up her son, Matthew. A squad of Interpol police arrives with Doe MacArthur and takes control of everything, but it's too late. Alex gets past security with a fake passport and is on an outbound flight. On the flight, Alex has a new tech associate with her and they view the video on the disc. It's of building plans with large bombs in a basement, which can cause a disastrous event like the 9-11 attacks, but bigger. At the same time, the senator will use this event to lead him to presidency and war, just like the generals want. When Alex calls Washington's cell, MacArthur answers, and she lets him know she knows the plans. He tells her that the senator will hunt her down until she's dead, so he tries to bargain a deal for the drive to avoid it. Alex ends the call by saying she has spent years in the dark and must now come out to the light implying she'll fight to reveal what she found out. The movie ends with the senator and MacArthur discussing the situation. The senator wonders whether she'll be greedy or a martyr. MacArthur answers she'll be a martyr as she declares war against him. The senator mutters that for one to be a martyr, they would have to be dead. 